if you don't have a house that you own yet, like if you're renting a um, house hack, watch as many videos as you can on it. The first place, don't get emotional about it. Don't go, I'm going to buy this place. This is episode number 32 of Short-Term Mental Success Stories Podcast. Are you an investor that's looking to have your home professionally managed? Go to cohostit.com for more information. Welcome back to Short-Term Rental Success Stories. I'm your host, Julian Sage. This is a show where I talk to hosts about their journeys in starting and growing their short-term rental business. My goal is that you'll be able to walk away with practical information that'll help you become a better host and learn how to scale your business. Like any exceptional host, we all strive for five-star reviews. So please go on over to iTunes and let us know what you enjoy as it really helps support the show. If you haven't done so already, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation, to connect with the community. Hey, what is going on, Host Nation? So I'm just super excited because I have some special news. John and I are actually putting together a little mastermind group called BNB Empire Builders, where we are going to be working with just a small amount of people to really help them stretch and grow. So if you don't already know, John and I have a local meetup in the DC area where we are helping people that just come out once a month. We'll go out there and we'll just catch up and see how people are doing. And we've seen people just progress so much. Like they came to us, they didn't know anything about Airbnb or rental arbitrage, but they wanted to get in on the space. And then through some, you know, through some direction, through some kind of motivation and accountability, we've been able to help them to acquire their first properties. And now they are short term rental hosts. And we want to be able to do that with other people, with other BNB Empire builders. So we are opening up for a very limited time because we can't have too, too many people. So it is first come, first serve. And we, you do have to fill out an application because we all are also looking at, you know, what, what is the type of person that is going to be joining our mastermind group? So if you are interested in finding out more and actually joining that, it's going to be really cool. We're going to be doing live Q&As. We're going to be answering your guys' questions and helping you stretch and build your BNB empires. So if this is something that interests you, then go to shorttermsage.com backslash store and you can apply for that. So as you all know, investing in short-term rentals can take a lot of risk when you're investing a lot of time and money into it. And that's exactly what Michael Cotroneo took. Michael was a full-time employee who bought his first single-family home in Houston in July of 2017, where he rehabbed it and turned it into a long-term rental property. Later on, he realized that doing short-term rentals was a lot more beneficial since it's giving him a higher return on his rental income. In addition to a duplex, Michael also invested in RVs and currently owns multiple properties in Arkansas. In this episode, Michael shares his experience in transitioning from working as a W-2 employee to owning and managing multiple short-term rentals. Even some of them are RVs, which is just super cool. He talks about the contrast of investing between single-family homes, RVs, and the differences of rehabbing homes for short-term rentals versus long-term rentals. If you like my show notes for this episode, go to shorttermsage.com backslash str32. Or if you like my show notes sent to your inbox every week, then go to shorttermsage.com backslash show notes. With all that being said, on to this week's conversation. Hey, welcome back, Coast Nation, to another episode of Short-Term Rental Success Stories. In this episode, we have the special honor of speaking with Michael Catronio. Michael, would you please introduce yourself to the Host Nation? Uh, let us know who you are and what inspired you to get into short-term rentals. How's it going, guys? So my name is Mike. Uh, I'm an Airbnb host uh, with me and my wife, who is still in bed. <laughs> uh, we have listings in Houston and in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. Currently, I'm in here in uh, Medi- Medellin, Colombia, um, in a cafe, trying to make this work while traveling. Um, let's see, what else about us? We used to teach, and uh, thankfully, we got out of that, and now we just do short-term rentals full-time now. So you're, you're full-time renters now, uh, or you're, you're full-time short-term renters. Um, previous to that, you were teachers. Uh, how long were you teaching, and then when uh, did it? When did, how do you, well, first, how did you find out about short term rentals? What got you into that? Yeah. Um, so we've been on Airbnb since 2014. Um, <clears throat> so we, we, we were what I would call high end guests. Um, so like, you know, we would stay in something that was nice, but affordable. We would stay in the U.S., Mexico, uh, sometimes in, in, uh, Asia. <clears throat> um, so, you know, so, so we, we would stay in rooms, houses, guest suites, um, you know, basic stuff. Uh, and that's kind of a bit of, of, of how, how we learned, you know, that with short term rentals, you don't have to have like a high end house. Um, like there are, you know, some of us that have houses that are amazing, 
Um, there are guests that are totally going to have something basic, simple, um, and we were, you know, those type of guests. Okay. And, and when, because you were full-time teachers, when did you realize, okay, um, this after when, when did you get your first unit and when did it start to realize like this is actually going to be a profitable uh, full-time business? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a story. You ready for this one? All right. So, uh, we were, okay. So, so my, my wife and I, we met while I was a diving instructor in Asia. <clears throat> uh, while we were waiting on our green card, we, 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 we had to move over to China. We taught there for a year, liked it, came to the U.S., uh, taught in Houston myself for four years now, um, Layla two years. So after about two years of teaching, we hit that point where like, we're like, you know, we, we, we had W2 work, we had tax re returns, all that stuff that you need for a mortgage. <clears throat> and so we bought our first house. Well, being a fan of bigger pockets and better, uh, we decided to jump in really deep. Like right off the bat. So we bought an area called Third Ward in Houston. Uh, as a 1930s duplex. I had no idea what we were getting into. Um, again, we had never done a, a rehab ever, ever. And this was one hell of a, of a rehab that this place needed. But I did not know this. So we buy it. <clears throat> the first one, uh, about a month later, we have Hurricane Harvey. Um, and while we're in Mexico during that summer, so, okay, so we buy that July 20, I want to say, I'm going to say 2017, could have been 16, but I want to say 17. Someone can we go see when Hurricane Harvey happened. And then we went to Mexico while our contractor was fixing everything up. <clears throat> so that didn't go well. Um, we make it back. Everything is just ridiculous. Um, and then so we go through about three months of trying to work with, with like her. We eventually fire her. We fire the head consultant. Um, so we're having to live there. And it's like this first year to, to like teach. And it is just crazy. Like, like just absolutely ridiculous. Um, we're showering. So we're literally living with like one outlet in the entire house for the upstairs. Uh, for the hot water, you have to literally reset the hot water heater every time that you use it because it's wired up all types of craziness uh for having to like balance the shower holder while we shower so we don't get water it was just it was just it was an absolute nightmare and then we had the coldest winter in houston since like 1940 that you snowed we had no no heat we had we had one radiator heater that was it so we went through all that found a good contractor he finally got the house fixed up good enough to rent and we decided, okay, we're going to move out of here and get another house. But we didn't know whether we should do a long-term rental or a, a short-term. So we found a property manager. We met some of the people who would do short-term rentals. Didn't really like the vibe for the type of renters that we would get in that area. So we decided, you know what? We've been Airbnb guests. Let's give it a shot. So we went out, went to Ikea, bought a crap. We bought a lot of furniture. Um, set it up, uh, for the, for, for the downstairs part of the duplex. Uh, once we got it set up, someone came in one night, stole it all. Someone well, stole half of it. Someone came back in the second night and stole the rest of it. And I mean, like shower curtains, blankets, pillows, the entire bed that was already set up. Uh, try to move the, try to take the couch out. Try the laundry. We, we actually made it there and the laundry was outside. Um, and then, in, and, and then the like farmhouse sink was sitting in our real barrel. Um, so that was some craziness. Uh, so we went and bought more furniture. Uh, we put cameras outside. Um, and at that point, you know, we, we moved into our new single family that was already done, already rehab about eight minutes down the road. And then it just ex exploded. Um, we had, so much demand, so much. Um, and first we were doing private rooms, um, which come to find out later on after learning is not the way, the way to actually go. You want to do like the whole place. And so we were cons consistently with like 95% occupancy. Um, and at that point I was like, well, we have this RV that, that, that we had fixed up about 
two years ago, um, a 1990 Toyota Odyssey motorhome. Uh, we drove it up to Maine, we drove it up to Chicago, we went down to Key West, we had it in our backyard. I was like, let's hook it up and just see how this does. And we hooked up that one and instant success. I mean, that, that thing became one of the top Airbnbs in Houston. It was insane. Um, and then at that point, you know, we, we had our own single family house <clears throat> and we wanted to make some money off, off of that. And so we actually turned that, we, it was a, so it's a three bed, two bath, two, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So two bedrooms and one bathroom, one side of the house. And then there's like, a, you know, a little wall there, you know, for that hallway. So we blocked that off, added in a French, a, 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 a French door on one of the bedrooms. And we turned that bedroom into its own private guest suite. So that guest suite alone paid for our whole mortgage. Um, and then what else? Um, I feel like I'm speaking way too much. <laughs> no, no, I think I think that uh, that was a really, really interesting story, Mike. I think, um, wow, you had the crap beat out of you when you first just started getting off, you know. And I think yeah. that that's pretty cool, though. That that you know, sharing your story here and how you you got this duplex uh, to you know your first investment on a teacher's salary. Uh, you move in there. You're dealing with awful contractors that you know it always seems like the first contractor is always the worst contractor. Deal with yeah. that. And then you're struggling. Like, should we short term rent, long term rent? And you decide to short-term rent and then somebody steals all your stuff did you get that that money back did airbnb no. reimburse you no no, uh, no. Uh, what 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 are some things that maybe uh you could have done that would have allowed you to get that money back uh so at that point we weren't on airbnb yet so that 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 would have been a big thing um let's see but also uh i guess honestly who i think stole it was probably probably one of the contractors guys um, I can't really say, you know, it was just, it was one of those things where we were just, just happy the house was like done. You know, it was like, at that point it was like $1,200 worth of stuff. I was like, you know what, let's just do it again. Um, and I've come to realize the things like whenever it's the most difficult thing, that's, that's when you're about to get your biggest payoff. Um, so like <clears throat> with, with like houses, that I bought the ones that are the worst shape, that are the hardest to rehab, you know, with like RVs, the ones that are in the worst shape and they're a pain to fix up. That's when I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to make the most money off of this or I wouldn't be having this like type of struggle. Now, with with the duplex, uh, if you if you wouldn't mind talking about some of the returns on that, how, how much did you uh, invest in that place? Is it completely paid off? And then what were the monthly returns on that? Yeah. Um, so that one, uh, we did that on an FHA 203K loan. If you don't know what, what that is, look up. It is, it is a powerful, powerful in, in investment tool. Um, we bought it for one, I want to say like 182. Uh, and it's one of those loans where the purchase and the rehab are all in one. Um, and the safety net is you also get a HUD con consultant that like helps you with it. If you get a good HUD consultant that is in cahoots with the contractor. Um, and the way that that one works is the contractor doesn't get paid. The contractor gets paid through the bank. And so if the HUD consultant and you keep that in, in mind, you as the actual like customer don't like the, the, the uh, work, the bank will not pay the contractor a cent. So that first one didn't get a dime. She didn't get any money whatsoever, and there's nothing that she could do about it because the, the work that she did was shoddy. I mean, it was ridiculously bad. Um, uh, and, and then, so for the rehab, we ended up not being able to use all the money that we were going to use from the bank. Um, so we ended up having to do, because of just some weird paperwork stuff there, I actually had to borrow um, uh, 40000 in a personal loan, and I used that to fix it the house, find another contractor outside of the bank's network, uh, and they fix it up with, with that and then some of, some of my own money. So at the end of the day, we put about, I want to say $65,000 in it. Uh, so all in all, uh, let's see, what is that? 245, let's say 250 with everything. And now the duplex is worth, um, uh, about 300 to 320. Um, and that area is just 
gentrifying more and more and more. Man, so your your first short term rental investment was was uh, a heck load of trouble. You you went through a lot of work to be able to get that up, but the returns on that, like you said, uh, you know, is kind of that diamond in the rough. And after after working on it, you, you've created something that is uh, generating a good amount of cash flow. How, how much is that that unit making now? Uh, so the duplex per month makes about five five thousand gross. Um, after mortgages and everything, we make probably about twenty two hundred dollars a month. Off um, now, if we were going to do that as a long-term rental, we'd be making like three hundred a month. Right. Yeah. That the beauty of short-term rentals. Now, I wanted to transition to your second venture, which was the RVs, and you kind of found a a pretty unique niche in that. Um, yeah. how, how what? What uh? How much are you investing? Are you doing the renovations yourself? Or are you contracting that out? And uh, yeah. what's the return on the RVs look like? Yeah. Uh, so I do most of the work. Um, I have had some some work with like people on cash grab or stuff. I just don't feel like working on. Um, let's see. The first RV we bought that for twenty, almost like twenty five hundred. This was way before we uh, we were doing air B and B. Um, we bought that just to have like a you know hashtag van life type of thing. Uh, we fixed that up with uh, myself, uh, uh, my mom's ex ex boyfriend, and my cousin, the same guy who's doing our rehabs now. We spent about a month and a half fixing up all of that, all new RV systems, all new floor walls, um, all that stuff. We probably put about well, about three thousand dollars in, so let's say about five. Um, and we drove that to Maine for a summer. We drove it down to Key West for Christmas break. Um, we got some good usage out of it. Um, but, you know, it was a bit of an older class C, B class. So, like, it, it was slow. Couldn't go up, up, up 60 to save its life. The AC kept going out. Um, and then we had that behind our house just because we had, we had nothing to do with it and we decided to put it up as an air B and and it was five thousand dollars in it. I mean it it, it makes like fifteen hundred a month and there's people in it right right now. I mean it's it's consistently built. And and from there you kind of realize like man this is a really good return on investment. The amount of time that you maybe put into the duplex uh is do you think that it's actually worth more investing into like RVs than it is maybe the uh, the, the rundown duplexes? Well, okay. it's it's like it's two different strategies. So like if you're looking just for ROI and just straight up cash flow, yeah, RVs are good. Um, but also I'm only 30, 32 now, um, and so that duplex is, is like on a thirty year four point five percent mortgage. Um, you know, so. I, so like that, that, that would be there as like a great future in investment. Um, so the RVs, I really used, used those, um, to take that cash from the RVs. I found that that's right back into the Airbnb business. Um, so like I, 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 I didn't use any of that because at that point we were still working our W2 jobs. And so we lived off of that paycheck and took all the air, 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 air. Airbnb money and some of that into that business. Um, so at that point, we had the duplex and an RV. Well, those were consistently booked. Um, so then I found another RV for $600. Uh, and I put that back there as well. My wife thought I was a little bit crazy. Um, but I was like, look, we're totally full. I think we have room to do one more. And I put about $2,500 into fixing that. I did, I, my, myself, I did all the plumbing. I did all new walls, I built beds, I built a little kitchen cabinet area there. I had someone else build the shower because that was a nightmare. Um, painted the outside, fixed up the, uh, the, uh, the, the roof. Um, and now that one is from the top Airbnb's in Houston. Um, and that brings in like an extra fifty hundred dollars a month. Now I'm not renting these for a whole lot of money. So they're about, I'd say average about 30 to 40 a night, $25 cleaning fee. But for people just passing by or people just wanting something affordable and like nice for a, you know, a weekend, um, they, they love it. I would say if it's for 
Motel 6 guest, I don't want to pay for like an $80 Motel 6 on the side of a highway in Houston. I'd rather have an Airbnb, something cute, um, for like, for them, probably like 50 to 60 a night. So, so because, because you're, uh, you're targeting a lower price point, have you noticed that the, uh, the quality of the guests has gone down or is it, is it okay? Yes. Yeah. That is one thing to watch out for. Your $30 guest, uh, can be a bit of a handful. Um, however, with the RVs, it's not much they can, there's not much damage that they can really do. Worst we've, we've, we've seen is, you know, smoking some weed, a bit of trash, you know, dirty dishes. There's really not much that they can mess up. So nothing major, just um, more of those, you know, you know, those type of guests. Are you are you leaving the RVs there uh, all year long? Because we, we actually had another guest who, uh, uh, Chad Miller, he does airstreams, yeah, and he would yeah. actually take them down yeah. to Florida during the slower season. And so it's like uh, he's getting full, you know, full season coverage with with his units. Is that something that you do? Uh, so with Houston, there since it's you know. In the deep south, um, it stays warm, you know, throughout most of the year. So we just, you know, we have a uh, window AC unit for the summer, 5,000 BTUs, does great. We put one of those radiator heaters for winter time, also good. Uh, it's hooked up to the same sewer and water line as the hot water heaters and, and, and like mainline in and sewer line for the house. So that just all just feeds in. Um, and yeah, yeah, we just leave them there. Yeah, I, I really like I really like what you said about the you know um, the the contrast between the duplex and the RVs because with the duplex you're you're building that generational wealth you're building something that can take you uh, a lifetime the RVs you know they're eventually going to fall apart you're going to have to maintain them yeah. and it, you know the uh, how much you put into it it's not maybe not going to increase the value too too much but um, I, I like the the contrast that diversification when did it become a uh, when when were you able to uh, step away from your w w2 job and and how was that transition oh so that that um, transition is right now uh, let's see we we stopped working this was our last year to like to teach um, and so uh, let's well, now um, so we figured we would be able to do it starting in May. Um, we spent about a month and a half in Houston, you know, just, just kind of making sure everything's good, you know, fixing this, fixing that, seeing how that, you know, flow, flow works. If like, if we don't do that much stuff. And then, so we flew to Mexico, uh, for about a month, you know, just, just in case we're only an hour and a half flight, $200, the, the house burns down or something that, like drastic happens. It could be right back. Um, and then that was fine. Um, the rehabs were still getting fixed while I was gone. They knew it was still happening while I was gone. I would call it air B B and B. Like, like XYZ issue happened. Um, but I was able to manage everything from here. I said, okay, that's going well. Let's go farther. Um, now again, here, if I needed to go back, it's like nine hours and it's like $300. It's not too, too bad. And so as we kind of see that everything's fine, we're going to step farther and farther out. Um, so by September, hopefully we'll be in Chile and Argent and, and or Argentina. And if that goes well, come spring of next year, we'll, 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 um, we'll change times of, we'll, we'll, to Europe. Um, and that'll be like a big risk because there, everything needs to be working well for a 16 hour flight away in like an eight hour time difference. So like that, like that's happening now. So uh, I, I think that does, that's a very, uh, very small, uh, very smart approach. You, you're kind of dipping your water. You're going a little bit farther into the deep end, into the deep end yeah. and seeing how, how that works. And, you know, it really, it does make a difference. You could be here or you could be over there. If something bad's going to happen, something bad's going to happen. But I think for you, it's building up your, your self-confidence where it's like, okay, we can kind of let this kind of sit by itself and let it kind of do its thing. How, how does that, how does that feel, uh, you know, tr doing that, that transition now? Really good. Honestly, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's like a dream. Really, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's so cool. Uh, doing, doing podcasts in, uh, Medellin, Colombia while your units are making money. That's, that's, that's a good, good life. Good life. So, uh, I also want to hit on, uh, because you're not just managing the, uh, units in, uh, Houston, but you also have multiple properties in Arkansas. Uh, and with those, you decided to do more of a rental arbitrage, uh, approach, mm -hmm. correct? So, 
We all know. Um, so one of them, uh, okay, so at, uh, let me see how to go. So I had some money saved, saved up and I was looking at, at um, Airbnbs in Hot Springs. First thing I did, I pulled the, the first thing I, I, I did, I just looked, just looked around on Airbnb. I was like, huh, a lot of these rentals are booked. And like, I know houses in, in like Hot Springs, they're not that much money. And so I pulled some info from Air DNA. Uh, and if you guys don't know what that is, it's, it's, it's like an Airbnb market research software. Um, I wouldn't pay for it every single month, but just to see if something's worth it, definitely worth it. It's like 35 bucks, totally worth it. Um, and the data was really, really good, better than Houston. Um, and then I, you know, did some more research and Airbnb said over the past three years, Arkansas had grown 300% year over year for the past three years between Little Rock, Fayetteville, Hot Springs, I think some Bentonville where Walmart's at. Um, so I just started looking around and houses yeah, were cheap. Um, I bought the first house for $6,000, no, $6,500. Um, it was in rough shape. It was in a good spot. Um, and then my wife's cousin, you know, heard about what we were doing. He wanted to, you know, jump in and do all of this, but he didn't have, you know, the knowledge, the market knowledge, the, the uh, rehab. And he's up in Vancouver, Canada, where the market is way too hot. Um, and so he actually bought that from me. And then we made a partnership where, uh, you know, for like those houses there, he puts in all the money. I have all the guys to do the rehab. I run the rehab. I take care of the decorating, you know, all, all of the headache that comes with a rehab. Um, and I manage it afterwards. And then when we refinance it, third, uh, third strategy, uh, you know, he gets that money back on well, the first house. It was again hell. Um, we weren't living in it, so it wasn't as bad. But oh boy, we were over budget. It had so many issues. The electrician was a crook. Um, uh, it was, I mean, you know, we got all the plumbing done. And then, like, that last minute, we'd be like, hook, hook it all up. And we realized that the sewer line needs to now be replaced all the way from the house to the city line. Uh, deciding, I thought that we could stay. We, couldn't so we had it there was an extra like seven thousand dollars for the siding work um it was just it was a it was a hassle but again the biggest struggle the biggest payoff it is one of the top airbnbs in hot springs now it is my best air, air airbnb because i was able to build it from the ground up new floor new walls new ceiling new siding new doors new windows new fixtures new everything i took all of my knowledge and applied it to that house to make it an airbnb from the ground up and now it does really really well um and then we ended up budgeting thirty seven thousand to fix it up ended up costing like sixty thousand to fix it up but at the end of the day it appraised for eighty two thousand so my partner got all of his money back and that's all of his money for the rehab for the extra cost um and for all the furniture so he has no money in that deal whatsoever and so he makes an infinite roi i have no money and it's just a lot of time and sweat, and I make infinite ROI. Um, and then I have another house up there that another two that I own solely. And I got another two that I haven't started to rehab yet. And then the one that's going to be finished part of this week is another one with that same partner. I find it, uh, he buys it, he pays for the rehab, and then we refinance it, and he gets all that money back, or as much money as possible back. Why? So, I mean, that, that that you're you're going through um uh says a very very um I mean that's very challenging dealing with contractors dealing with all this uh, while you're working a full time job um it's like what 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 is what is what would you say is the most challenging part of being able to scale this type of business model because yours is more of like the 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 burr approach but with an Airbnb flip to it. Uh, I say the hardest thing. Um... Uh, I don't know. So having good contractors, that's, that's really hard. Time, time, okay, time, time, and I guess money. Um, you know, if, if we had more money or if we could get, you know, more mortgages, I would totally buy more house. Like, yeah. Um, but time, 
And then I'd also like to buy something else that I can own or occupy, you know, something that's around, you know, you know, 200, 300,000. Um, but the way that banks are with, with, with loaning when you're something boy, it makes it a bit more difficult. So I have, I have to wait to be able to buy something else of that like price range. Um, yeah. So I guess the hardest thing would be time and good contractors. And and have you found the secret to uh, finding reliable contractors yet? I don't think there is one. Uh, man, it's just man, it's it's yeah, it's really hard. Right right now, my um, cousin he does really well. Uh, it, it's, he's like the perfect contractor. He does things to like save save you money. He like calls you for issues. Um, he has like he he has like my mindset in his head. Um, which you know, took a little bit of time, uh, but now now it's it's perfect. Um, but again, I have two houses that I haven't been able to touch yet because he's so busy, like working on these other two. Um, so if I could find an, uh, another contractor, he could be doing work on this house with my for my partner, while I have someone else working on my house. And so that's a bit of a challenge there because I don't have I have one guy in like his you know team. I don't have to, I don't have to. Now you said that your units, uh, like your RV, you said that was the number one in Houston, Arkansas. You had the number one house there. What 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 are you doing to be able to set your units apart to really stand out amongst um, everybody else? Yeah. Um. So we would do something interesting, uh, like the like I'm gonna call it the blue RV. The inside is uh, it's like an aqua green, um, and it has like a like like um, ship left wood ceilings, I guess seemed to really like that. And then so for the other RV, RV I bought the yellow, um, I made all of the inside like like pine ship left, all the walls. Um, and so when I'm building these out, I have in mind what I'm what am I gonna take a photo of to make this stand out on Airbnb. I'm not just going around just doing stuff. I'm like, what can I do in this little bit of space here that when I take a photo when I'm over here, to make the space pop. Um, and then for the silver one, uh, I made all that inside pink. Uh, I found out most of our guests that stay in those RVs seem to be women. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna make it like a hot pink with like a pine floor. Um, and then, you know, and so when I take those photos, it's nice, bright, pink, um, looks cute. Um, so I guess when I'm building them up, I always have that, I, since I, do photos myself. I have that end goal of, of what am, what is going to be in that photo on Airbnb as I build this. And and what do, what do you do for the uh, the Arkansas house? Uh, kind of the same, yeah. Um, so with the Arkansas houses, um, I do accent walls. Um, you know, I do furniture that's that's a bit different or um, stands out. Um, yeah, I just. I, I, I always have that that like in 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 mind of how can I make a, a, a photo in this room from this angle pop so when it's on air B and B that's like the move like guess guess like that um, so like for example one of the bathrooms at one of our houses it's like a jacuzzi tub right so there's a plug un, underneath that tub well me and my cousin had the funny idea of uh, let's put some LED lights under that tub. And then plexiglass, and then like a little diorama under that tub. And so we did we did that, um, you know, because I knew that would be something that like if, like guests would like see in photos and go, what is what is going on there? I want to stay there. I want to see what what is happening underneath that tub. So so you have guests that are are staying with you so that they could check out what you have going on with the tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very and cool. We, very- Right now it's uh, dinosaurs versus cars. I, I don't know why it was just we do we walk to Walmart and we were like, let's get this this like set here. And then next we'll probably change it to something else. Yeah. That's that's funny. Yeah, I'll 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 include uh, your your listings uh, in the description. All, all the all the hosts um, that have been on the show, we, we we like to include their their listings to, for uh, other hosts to kind of get a feel for what what you have going on. Um, but that is very cool. Uh, is there any? I, I want to go back. What what would you say? Because I think there's a probably a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that listen to the show are you know maybe working a full time job and they want to 
be able to transition to real estate. Um, and your your model is more of like the the, the Burr the Burr method. So uh, for people that are just starting off, what what is the most uh, uh, challenging part of starting that business, and how did you kind of overcome that? Uh, the most challenging part, man, kind of thing. Is it bad to say it's kind of all a challenge? Um, so like buying the house is a challenge. Finding it is a challenge. Qualifying is a challenge. Um, figuring out, you know, what type of furniture to install that you want to do, that's a challenge. And then Air, Air, B&B, they do not hold your hand at all. Like, okay, so like, I used to be a waiter back in like college, and even for that, like for Outback, they would sit me down for like two days, I'd watch videos, and I'd go over like a little manual and whatever. Airbnb, none of that. You get nothing. Um, so building the listing is a huge challenge. Huge. And so many people don't do it well, uh, but even if they don't do it, they, they seem to you know, still be making money. Um, I guess man, the biggest challenge, I guess just getting started. Um, you can't think of it, uh, of this in a way of, I want to, to, to be making enough money on Airbnb to stop, you know, having a W2 job. You have to break it down to little, little tiny steps. That is the only way that, that you're going to do it. This seems impossible once, like, once you start. Like, I started two years ago and I had no idea two years later I would be literally at this point. You know, I was like, look, I want to buy my first house. I want it to be an investment. I'm not buying a, 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 a forever home, some home I love. The numbers make sense. An area that's growing. I know it can, you know, maybe be a long-term rental as a duplex or an Airbnb possibly. Um, and just went through those steps. I mean, and it was a challenge. Um, I taught in the, in the Aldine school district in Houston at that time. So, okay. So, you know, that are familiar with Houston and maybe listening. Hear this. I lived in Katy, right? Taught in Aldine. It's about 25 minutes away. And then after school, I would travel from Aldine into downtown Houston. And I didn't know Houston very well at that point. I'd only been there for like a year, year and a half. And I drove around everywhere, like down neighborhoods that I've never been to, just scouting them. I guess I... For them, I guess it's called driving for dollars. I have no idea what that was. I was just like, I'm going to drive around and like find stuff. And I ended up in some sketchy parts. I ended up like way up in like eight acre homes. I ended up way down like sunny side. Um, I didn't know third ward even existed. And that's why that's that's why I found this place. Um, and it's been sitting on the market for like over almost a year. Um, in addition, no one was interested in it yet. But again, I've been on air in the I'm not buying a house where I'm going to live in it forever. I'm looking for like something five, ten years down the road, and I could see it's like right next to down to to downtown. It looks like like but some of the really nice neighborhoods, but this one has just been the the collected. And I found that just by spending days after work driving around. My realtor thought I was nuts, um, but it it you know. It worked out. Um, and my wife at the, at the time, yes, I was married that, in, that entire time. My wife is not uh, not high maintenance, which is definitely not low maintenance. Um, dealt with all of that because she also saw that that house would be something for us, that I had, you know, motivation and I had a goal. Um, and, you know, so, you know, it worked out for us. Um, it, anyway, I guess the main thing is break it down into steps, take that first step, and then just slowly keep going from that point. Because there's no way that that you can think I'm going to be at this at this point and I actually get started. That's yeah, no way. Yeah, I think I think I, I think what you said uh, you said is really nice. Um, you know, you 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 you're gonna you have to jump, you have to do it, um, and you're either gonna sink or you're gonna swim. And right. you're, you're, you're going to have to learn along the way. You're not just going to come into the pool and learn how to swim right away, but hopefully you're, you're not putting yourself into a position where you're going you're to drown. So right. I think, I think you, you were smart about that. You had that W2. 
uh, supplement that income and you're you're in the shallow end, you're, you're swimming and you've been swimming all along this, this point in the shallow end and now you're ready to kind of really take that to the next step and you're you're really ready to swim into the deep end. Uh, that yeah. That is some exciting, exciting stuff, Michael. Um, is there anything that you do that has helped your guests leave positive reviews? Ask. Ask for a five-star re- review. That it, it, it's, it's really that simple. Um, you know, we, we like trying to, you know, leaving some water bottles on the bed, some chocolate, some this and that. And, you know, guess we don't really take advantage of it and didn't really seem to matter. Um, I know I'm sure if you have like a, you know, high end air B&B, you know, a bottle of champagne or, you know, or something would really do it. Um, but for us, it's really just, just ask. Once they leave, ask, ask for feedback. Um, and typically if, Though do it over messenger and not in a re- re- review. Fingers crossed. Um, yeah, ask. Just like Richard says on S S S T R U. Just ask for a uh, five star. And is there one house rule that has saved you before? <laughs> uh, a house rule that has saved me. Man, when if you get a bad a bad guess, there's nothing that that can save you. <laughs> uh, I guess, um, so we do charge per guest. Um, and so sometimes guests will try to be sneaky. And I would say it stays me, but I put in there like, look, if you don't have the right amount of, of like guests in your booking, and I have a camera out, out, outside of the, of all of our houses, like, you know, on the outside facing the front door, um, it will be a two times charge because I used to just, you know, call here. B&B, make a resolution case, and I would obviously win it, but it, it, it would be exactly what I was going to make if they had done the right thing. So I make it a two times fee. So if like someone books for one and brings two extra guests, you know, and they stay for three nights, that's 120 bucks that I can make off air, you know, off of the resolution case. Um, and I stopped, it might be kind of bad, I stopped mentioning it to guests. So so when a guest looks, right, in my greeting, I say, how many guests do you have? How many cars do you have, right? I have in the house rules about the extra guest. Um, my initial message that I use with smart B and B double checks. Hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. you're here for like this day, you have this many vehicles and you have what, you know, whatever guest, you know, is that right? Just, you know, to make sure for the, you know, whatever, whatever. And at that point, they still are, you know, don't, have they either don't realize it or aren't trying to be honest i just don't even mention it because i realized if i started to mention it guests would get frustrated they would cancel and it would just and ultimately be like working in into a negative re- re- review just for me enforcing airbnb's policies and my own house rules. so i just let it slide i send myself an email and i put their like their like name their like the, the uh, date and where and when they stayed and like once a month, I, I like search for those and I call Airbnb, make a case and Airbnb nine times at a, at a 10 will either take it from the guest or they'll just pay it. Airbnb will. That, no, that's, that's a really good tip that has been shared, uh, two times in the fee, uh, because your, your time is worth something. Uh, you know, you're not just, you're not just trying to just collect what extra that if a normal person went through the process that they would be, that you'd be receiving, you know, you're, you're charging you know, because they are either like actively trying to hide something or they're actively not reading your messages and not, you know, communicating with you. Right. I think, it's, I think that's greedy. It's, it's, there is an extra cost for extra gifts. I mean, like, like for me, there's, that's, 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 that's more water. It's more wearing, wearing terror. That's more laundry. Jesus, laundry. My God. Um, so, you know, that's, that you, you are, the one taking all, all of that risk. You you took out the mortgage, you put all the money in, you deserve to get paid. Um, and so, you know, I have some guests, you know, that like, you know, think, oh, I've never been charged and I'm like, like an extra guest fee, you know, it's greedy, this and that. You know, if Airbnb ever stops or if, if we get a recession, maybe soon, and the market goes, goes down, those guests aren't going to help you. You know, you are the one taking all that risk. So you deserve to get paid. Speak, speak of the truth, Michael. Speak the truth. <laughs> if you could give one piece of advice to someone who's trying to start their uh, Airbnb business, what would that be? 
if you don't have a house that you own yet, like something that, like if you're renting, like a, like a lot of people are already are, um, house hack. Watch as many videos as you can on it. The first place, don't get emotional about it. Don't go, I'm going to buy this place that we're going to live in forever. Because you, you can move within one year. You're only telling the government that you're going to stay there for one year. And really, you can do it for six months. Um, buy, buy something that's either uh, a starter home style, starter home style, single family residence, not something that, like, let's say if, if like, you can qualify for 300000 don't go spend 300000 Buy a starter home for 150, 200, whatever, or buy a duplex or a triplex or a fourplex. You can do all of those owner occupy with three and a half percent down. Do that. And in turn, any other spare space, either bedrooms or give it you know, two budget like sport packs, turn one of those units into an air B and B. Location does matter, but I'm finding more and more on air B and B. It's really not that important. Airbnb, Airbnb seems to be able to work almost anywhere. Um, it's really unique that that way. Um, so yeah, I guess the main ad, ad, advice: use government programs to buy your your first house. As an investment, and if you can buy a duplex, triplex, fourplex, do that. If not, buy an affordable single family, family residence. Because then you can do what we do. <clears throat> All of us a duplex, right? We got that on one teacher salary. I was the only one working. When my, when my wife got a got a teaching job, where when the whole we could qualify for another mortgage, right? And so we bought another house, another you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac house. Um, so if you buy that first that that first house and you don't blow your load, you know, on on buying most expensive ones that you can find in a year, your income would have gone up because of Airbnb, and then you can probably qualify for another house. And what would you do differently if you had to start from scratch? I guess if I had to do it differently, it would be. I guess go head and first in, 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 into doing here being deep. If I, that first duplex, I made that into a long-term rental that I happened to be able to, to look out would work out really well as an air being deep, but I rehabbed it as a long-term rental. Um, if, if, if you're watching this, if you're even thinking about doing air being B, don't even consider doing it long, long-term. I mean, have it as a backup, but Whenever you buy that first place, build it as an Airbnb. It will do better. Guests will like it more. It'll be more you 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 need, and it'll be better set up for the type of, of style of place that you need for a, a short term rental. Um, so I guess if, if I had to go back, go short short term route for that, and set things up as a short term rental. And what 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 are some of those uh, those key differences between uh, rehabbing a home for a short term rental versus a long term rental? So there's, there's some cosmetic things and then there's some, some, uh, uh, what about utility things? Um, first off, you really don't need more than two bathrooms. One bathroom is fine. Um, really go and look at Airbnbs and you're going to see a lot of them are only one bathroom because that's really all guests need. Um, <clears throat> as far as the wiring goes for the electrical, put each bedroom on its own circuit because guests will Use the hair dryer in their bedroom and not in the bathroom. And if that's hooked into a, you know another couple of rooms, they're gonna have the power go out for multiple rooms. But if it's hooked up into one room, chances are it'll be fine. The the bricker won't trip. Uh, big hot water heaters. Get the largest one that you can fit because guests will use it and they will dry when the hot water goes out. Um, and then cosmetic things. Um, you know, don't just paint your house a bunch of crazy colors. Don't don't just make er everything like tan or, or like like or white. Like do do some interesting stuff. Um, put like accent walls. Um, um, arrange your bedrooms to be bed centered. <clears throat> what I mean by that is is don't worry about like all those stuff in like in that bedroom. Focus on the bed. Get the biggest bed, the best bed that. That you can afford, preferably a, a queen or better yet, a king, um, and arrange your room that that way. 
and then use materials that can handle renters. Uh, luxury vinyl, tile, hardwood, well, some hardwood. Um, do things that can handle the, uh, uh, the abuse that you would get from air being the guest. Um, what else really? That's about it. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, thank thank you for the thank you for those steps. Really, really good stuff. I think it's pretty interesting hearing the perspective, you know, from a uh, a flipper that is with the short term rental mindset. Because a lot of the times when when we speak to people, they say, "Oh, usually it's long term rental first, short term rental," and they kind of flip flop in between. Usually, long term rent is the primary motive. But uh, you you've kind of changed your your uh, mindset and the way that you 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 build your houses. So that's pretty unique. Uh, what, what's yeah. a question that I should ask the next professional host? Maybe someone that uh, is at uh, kind of maybe like a similar level or the next level or doing something different? Just something that that you would like to know. Um, what is your exit strategy? Um, so, like for example, let's say Air, 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 Airbnb goes goes under for whatever reason. So if 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 there was a reason, it would be that somebody else comes up and um, is a bit easier to work with when issues pop up. Um, yeah. So I guess what is your exit? Because, like, I'd say 30 years from now, I probably won't be doing short term rentals. But I'm using this as a cash engine to have enough properties that I can then maybe, you know, have them all paid off and then sell one every single year for, you know, 20 years and have that income over all that time. Um, maybe I, I can do private notes when I own all, all of them, sell them, and then hold them out like, like a uh, bank. Um, if I don't own them, Maybe move into doing long term rentals just because it's a lot easier. Um, or this is what I actually hope the, happens with the market. I hope there's, there's once Airbnb goes public and in and, and like the short term rental market uh, grows more, I'm hoping there'll be services out there that will actually, in, in a good way, manage everything. Like what long term rentals have in, you know, just, just your run of the mill property. Manager. Um, so I guess, yeah, like what is your exit strategy? Because we short term rentals, it's good money, but it is work um, and you can't do it correct. Um, so, like, what is your, what are you working towards? Great. And uh, that really, really, really good question. And w- what, uh, being, being a, a probably a big fan of bigger pockets, you're probably a very avid reader. Uh, what's, what's a book or uh, something that has really changed your business or your mindset? Uh, I think it was Brain Turner that wrote it. But, um, the one on on uh, uh, long long distance uh, rentals. That's not the actual name, but it's it's the one on there about long distance rentals. Um, that one has so many good strategies. Um, there is a new book by David Green that I would also recommend reading, uh, especially if you don't know eight, anything about her. Um, and then. The main one, the one that literally changed like my mindset entirely, Rich Dad Poor Dad. I mean, if 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 you're watching this and you've not read Rich Dad Poor Dad, you are cutting your legs out from underneath you. That is the biggest mindset change, real estate investing book out there. It is, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. I mean, it's un- unbelievable. Very nice. Well, thank you so much, Michael, uh, for the for the recommendations, for taking the time out uh, from traveling and and doing this. I I wish you the best of luck. I'm excited to see where you're going to be going, and uh, definitely I'll include everything, best ways to contact you in the show notes. And uh, let's let's stay connected in the host nation. And until next time, host nation, keep on hosting. Hope you host benefited from the show. If you found value, please go on over to iTunes, leave us a review, and let us know what you enjoy about the show. If you'd like to talk to hosts that have been featured in these episodes as well as the community, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation.